Hi guys and welcome to my retro watches. Well as you can see we've got another Phoebus on the bench because they've made a new model. This is called the Voyager. It's actually version 3 of the Voyager and I couldn't wait to get this onto the channel and show you guys because once again from my personal point of view Phoebus have knocked it out of the park and come up with another fantastic watch. So we've got the usual box from Phoebus, a canvas box but it's good enough and open inside and here we go this is the Voyager 3 so as you can see it's bang on trend with its sort of Tiffany style blue dial now I have to confess I chose that colour deliberately there's actually six colourways on this I'll show them a little bit later on in the video uh, but I was allowed to choose one colour and I figured got nothing of this sort. I see a lot of watches at the moment of this colour and I thought let's go for it. Uh, I've got a feeling that this might actually be possibly the most popular colourway of this watch but who knows. So let's do the usual, let's take it outside, get it in the light, do some good shots and I'll tell you all about the specs on this one. Right, here we are out in the garden where the natural light can show off the dial colour at its best. Personally, I do really like it. It's got that summer vibe. And like I said previously, it's also pretty much bang on trend as well. So the official reference for this model is the PY035 and it's prefixed with a B and the B stands for blue. I'll now show you the different colourways. So we've got this yellow version here. And that's $309, which is about 230 UK pounds. Uh, there's this lovely deep red colour. I do like that one a lot. And again, that is £230 or $309, whichever way you want to say it. The blue one in the video, exactly the same price in structure. And then you've got this one here, which is a black and gold one, kind of a vintage vibe. Same price again, $309, £230. But they also do in two special dial versions. The first one is this lovely green malachite dial. Now malachite is a mineral. I've not seen this on a dial before, but then in the vintage world, they're all metal dials as far as I've seen so far. And these more modern watches are using different uh, materials now, aren't they? I do like it in the, in the render. Uh, it is gonna cost you a little bit more if you like this one, and that is gonna be $350, which in UK pounds is about 262 thereabouts. And then finally, there's this Mother of Pearl version. Personally, I'm not a fan of Mother of Pearl, uh, but if you like it, if it floats your boat, that one's going to come in at $325, which is around about £240. Uh, I'll get into the specs and the movement a little bit later so we can then assess the uh, what you're getting for your money, really. But so far, these prices, in my opinion, are pretty decent. So the dimensions on this watch are really pleasing too. Case diameter is 39 millimeters. Uh, I'm a 3840 guy, uh, so this is sitting right in the middle of my sweet spot. And I think it's also refreshing to see a sub 40 millimeter case because that is going to suit most people's wrist sizes. Uh, the look to look is 45. Now the bracelet has got some male end links and it's roughly around 49 millimeters there too. So all in all, good proportions and it sits on the wrist really nice as you can see here. Uh, the case thickness is 14 millimeters and the lug width is 20 millimeters. So you're going to be able to change this one up to something different in the hot weather if you don't want to wear a bracelet. The bezel has a ceramic insert. It's got a high gloss uh, finish, which looks great on the watch. It looks great on the wrist, actually, but it's a real pain to film and even worse to take photographs of. Uh, it's 120 click unidirectional as well. Of course, it's got a numbered bezel you can see there from 1 to 12. So you could use this to set a different time zone, for instance. Or if you still wanted to time things, you could do that as well. Now let's talk about that dial. I am absolutely loving those indices. They're like little arrowheads that go all the way around, with the exception of 3 and 9, which, for the want of a better word, are squashed hexagons. I never took geometry at school, and it's definitely showing uh, now. I do think this dial is very well balanced. They've put the date at six, really nice touch. The date a window there has been framed and the date wheel itself has been colour matched to the dial. And they did this also on the Kraken model. Thought it was pretty good because that part has had to be bespoke made either, I guess, by Seiko themselves or perhaps they've had them made elsewhere. But they've had to fit that 
and it's a very very nice touch so i'm not complaining however i do think possibly on this blue version at least you could have got away with the black and white uh, because of the indices being uh, white with the black framing that in actual fact a black and white date wheel probably would have sat really really well as it is but i'm not complaining because it's a unique touch and it's a feature that i do like the usual Phoebus logo is present at 12. It's an octopus. It's a kraken. Uh, you decide. Personally, I'm a big fan of their logo, actually. Also, the minute track is really interesting. You've got uh, the minutes in bands of four, and with the five-minute intervals are in print. It just makes it look that little bit more interesting. Uh, down at six, you can see that the watch is offering a 200-metre water resistance which I do believe is a downgrade from the previous version, which was 300 metres. So I'm not sure why they've done that, uh, but I would not consider this a dive watch anyway. It's more of a casual sports watch, and I don't wear any watches in water. So in many respects, to me, it's irrelevant, but I know a lot of you guys will. 200 is a good enough depth, at least, to go swimming with. The watch has a screw-down crown to aid in that water resistance, and it's also been applied with the Phoebus logo as well. Always like that touch. Now, the case has got some nice finishing. It's all brushed. Uh, the side is vertical brushing. And then on the lugs, it's kind of like a satin finish, actually. The only part that's polished is actually the crown guards themselves. And that takes us on to the bracelet, which is solid stainless steel. It's got five links. Uh, the outer links have been brushed. The inner links have been high polished. Screw pins as well for adjustment. Feels really, really comfy on the wrist. I guess, again, it's a combination of it being solid and also those links because it gives it the flexibility. But I've really, really enjoyed wearing this. Uh, then down to the clasp. Standard clasp, really. Uh, milled clasp. And it's got etched the uh, Phoebus Octopus which again is an improvement because uh, if you any of you remember the eagle ray I did, it just said Phoebus on that clasp. It is the same clasp, but at least this time they've put their logo on, which is a nice touch. It does finish it off really well, in my opinion. Lastly, it's got a sapphire crystal. It's got three layers of uh, anti-reflective undercoating, so still pretty good in the daylight. Now then, let's get down to the loom shot because... This, once again, like the other Phoebus, has got 15 layers of Super Luminova BGW9 on the hands, the indices, and the bezel markings. I still don't know how they do 15 layers of looming, because when I loom anything myself, I can just about do one layer. So, uh, always impressive. It sounds impressive, uh, but of course, it actually looks impressive on this watch, because, as you can see now... Lastly, we have the instruction book, of course, in case you don't know how to use the movement. Uh, there's the two-year international warranty, which covers the movement. And finally, the free worldwide shipping that they offer and the full return and refund for 30 days after delivery, should you not like your purchase. So here we are back on the bench testing the movement because the movement is that trusty old Seiko NH35. Now, I am a fan of the movement because it's Seiko and I'm a massive Seiko fan. And this is a great movement, really. It's 24 joules. It's hand winding. It's hacking. Uh, 21,600 beats per hour. Power reserve about 41 hours as well. So it's got everything good going for it. But on the time grapher here, uh, we've got a horrendous beat error. Now, to some of you who aren't really into or well, watching this review to see the watch rather than the accuracy, Beat error is just an annoyance. That's milliseconds, it's out. But of course, over time, that will basically give you erroneous timing. Um, so I need to tighten that up and I will tighten that up. I won't do it on camera uh, for this, but for my own peace of mind, those lines have got to be a lot closer together. Look, it's now jumped to 0.7. Uh, now that is not Phoebus's fault because this is just a factory from Seiko. Um, so realistically, uh, they should be improving what they're doing at the factory. Uh, but there we go. Let's just test it in a couple of other positions, just to never know. Hopefully we're not going to see a fault. So we'll do the, I'm trying to think where I am now, crown up. And that's still fairly consistent. I know we're just coming off the bottom of the screen here. 
course, the rate is it doesn't know what it's doing at the moment. It's trying to catch up because it's definitely not plus 314. I can tell you that. There we go. So the rate obviously is going slightly lower. It tends to do in these positions, uh, but the beat error is still consistent, consistently bad. So let's put it at crown down. And that's bringing the, the lines back to uh, a straight line anyway, at least. Uh, again, it doesn't like the rate when you change it, does it? That's really unusual. So we're still seeing consistency. Um, it's accurate, don't get me wrong. So last final position, I'll just take it off the time grapher for that. It's always difficult to do on the fly. So we'll put dial down, which is usually the most or least stressed uh, position. And there we go. So the rate, this watch is accurate. It seems to be running well to within 10 seconds. It's just that beat error that's really annoying me. Uh, but there we go. Just to prove that the uh, NH35 can be regulated well, I've just tweaked the uh, regulator arm to bring in that beat error and change the rate slightly. And now you can see that it's actually running about as good as it could possibly get. So we are plus one second a day at this reading. It does vary a little bit in positions, but it's now within five seconds a day and we've got the beat error completely nailed to zero. So that's absolutely perfect. Uh, one last thing that I wanted to show you as well is of course the case back. Excuse the wobble on the camera. Phoebus make really, really good case backs. I've seen this one before, but of course there's the Phoebus logo. It's highly uh, embossed into that. And of course, you've got this sort of shot blasted effect as well behind it. Really, really well executed. And I do love a good case back and Phoebus have delivered again. So what are my positives? Well, it has to be the design. I really do like the look of this. Uh, the finish as well is really good. The finish on this case, if you can see that, is very, very well done. Uh, I like the choice of the bold colours. It's quite summery. And of course, spring is on the way up here in the Northern Hemisphere. So this could be a nice watch for the summer. Of course, I also like those indices. They are applied. So you can see they're raised off the dial and they do look very good, and they've been finished very well as well. Uh, the case size. So the case size is that real sweet spot, isn't it? 39 mil, you know, really, really good. It's not one of those massive watches. It's gonna suit just about every wrist out there, and that is good because they're marketing it for a wider audience, in my opinion. And then, of course, there's the price. So this for the, uh, 260, no, 230 UK pounds, wasn't it? I'm trying to remember now. So 230 pounds. I think you're getting a great watch for that. It's filling that little niche uh, gap that Seiko seem to have left behind. You know, Seiko put their prices up. And I don't really think you're getting much more for your money, to be honest with you. Um, and this is fitting there where they used to be. It's a it's an area in the market that needs to be filled. And models like this are definitely worth a punt. So what are my negatives? It's it, Honestly, it is hard to actually give you negatives on this one. But the first one is the date uh, ring or date wheel. You can see we're in low light conditions now and I'm finding it harder to read. Out in the daylight, you can read that that says 27, no problem at all. But inside, it is a bit of a struggle. Uh, perhaps they could have, like I said uh, previously, they could have used the white date wheel for this or even have just done the numbers in white because that would have obviously fit with everything else and maybe they would stand out uh, well enough. Uh, another gripe really is the bezel itself. Now, the bezel is good. Don't get me wrong, it clicks. But what I'm finding is they put a chamfer just on the edge here, and it's possibly too much for me. Sometimes you've got to squeeze it a little bit more to actually make it work. I don't particularly use bezels for, for much more than, uh, well, twiddling with really. It's like a little stress toy sometimes. And um, like I say, this one, just when your fingers are a little bit drier, you sometimes slip on it. So perhaps that could have been 
a little bit more grippy, should we say. And then lastly, it's not really a gripe, really. It's the NH35. Is, is the NH35 overdone? Is everybody used this to death now? In the Kraken uh, model they did, they actually used the Myota uh, 905, oh, so 9015. And the 9015 is a high beat movement. It's a little bit more accurate on paper and it's 25% thinner. So, you know, you can turn these sort of chunkier watches into a little thinner profile. And to be honest with you, that suits me personally. I've worn this, it's not particularly thick, but yet I always hear it catching on stuff. I catch it on door handles, I catch it on tables and all kinds of things. And perhaps it's again, because I'm coming from a vintage world where <laughs> we're used to watches being only, you know, less than 10 millimeters thick. Um, I don't know, that's my only critique. Perhaps to try and go a bit further now, push it on, put different movements in that have got that high beat so you get a nicer, smoother tick, a little bit more accuracy, and you've got a bit more room to play with for the size. But then that's it. Phoebus to me is a brand that seems to be going places. I said at the start of the video, I am a bit of a super fan now. They seem to be listening to the customers. They listen to people like myself, the, the reviewers, and they take the critique and they do something about it and they apply it to their designs. Uh, I've seen that firsthand in the three that I've now reviewed, the comments that people have made, and they seem to be being picked up on, and then the next bottle, they've improved upon it. So that is absolutely fantastic, because I don't really, would, well, I can't see people, again, like Seiko doing that, to be honest. So, you know, hands down to Phoebus. That's really it, to be honest with you. Great little watch. If you want to pick one of these up, of course, there's links below. There's also a discount code, uh, which is Retro Watch with some capital letters. Again, that'll be below. It gives you 5% off using the Worldwide Store. Check out their website. Look at their other models. Like I say, they're doing some really, really good things. Lastly, if you like the video, of course, give it a like and uh, leave some comments below. I'm going to read every one. I'd like to see what you've got to say about this particular watch. And uh, that's really it. Don't forget to join the Facebook group, uh, Retro and Vintage Watches and Restorations. Lots of us mad watch guys in there. 10,000 of us now. And uh, you will be in some good company. So more videos to come in for the regulars. Uh, I'll be back on the restorations. Uh, that's what's going to come up next. So I'll see you very soon with the next installment. And I'll give you a quick glimpse of the watch. It's going to be, it's going to be this. We have a little Titus. Uh, it's a vintage watch. It's got a lovely, lovely ETA movement on this. So wait till you see that. And it's completely dead at the moment. It is not working at all. So we're going to find out what's going on with that, strip it down and hopefully be able to repair it and bring it back into use. So thanks very much, guys, for watching. And I'll see you in the next video very soon. Bye for now.